Someone wrote, Ray, I disagree strongly with you about presenting the law first in order for people to come to Christ. It's false. Then he said, what person in the book of Acts became saved by first being taught about the law of Moses? Well, the answer is 3,000 Jews on the day of Pentecost, Acts chapter 2. The Bible tells us they were devout men from every nation under heaven. That word devout means they grasped hold well. These were godly Jews, devout Jews, who therefore ate, drank, and slept God's law. So when Peter stood up on the day of Pentecost, he didn't preach sin, law, wrath, judgment, or righteousness. No, these men were convinced of the disease, and Peter merely preached the cure. He gave them the gospel. The law was a schoolmaster to bring them to Christ. As you read scripture, you'll find many times it says to the Jew first. Why to the Jew first? because they had the law. They had the knowledge of sin. They would receive the gospel. It was no longer foolishness to them because they saw their need of a savior because the law works wrath. It shows us we're under God's judgment. Paul said, I think it's in Romans chapter three, what advantage has the Jew? And says, oh, much in every way because to them were given the oracles of God, the spoken word of God. God spoke his law to Moses. The advantage of the Jew was that they had the law to bring the knowledge of sin and prepare their heart for the mercy of God. A number of times in scripture we're told that God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. Biblical evangelism is always, without exception, law to the proud and grace only to the humble. That's why Jesus gave the law to the proud and rich young ruler. He said, I've kept the commandments from my youth up. Jesus gave him the law to bring the knowledge of sin. That's why we see Jesus giving grace to Nicodemus, a godly Jew, a teacher in Israel who knew the law. So Jesus said, for God so loved the world. He gave the cure because Nicodemus was already convinced of the disease. Same with Nathaniel, John chapter one. He was an Israelite indeed in whom there was no deceit. He read the way of God and truth and the law was a schoolmaster to bring this godly Jew to Christ. Remember, law to the proud, grace to the humble. See in the case of Zacchaeus, who was a Jew, he is up a tree to see Jesus. He came down immediately and accepted him. He said, behold, Lord, I give half my goods to the poor, and if I've wronged anyone, I'll pay them back fourfold. Zacchaeus quoted the law. He was a Jew that obviously knew the law. Think of Cornelius in Acts chapter 10. The Bible says he was a devout man, same word to describe the Jews. He was a devout man who grasped well and prayed always. So Peter gave him the gospel because he was humble of heart. Think of Paul in Athens. His heart was stirred because the whole city was given to idolatry. They were transgressors of the first and the second of the Ten Commandments. And that's what Paul preached about. He said, God is not graven by art and man's device. He preached the first and the second of the Ten Commandments. He reproved them. And then he preached future punishment by the law. God commands all men everywhere to repent because he has appointed a day in which he'll judge the world in righteousness. That's the righteousness which is of the law. God will judge with his law. Romans chapter 2 verse 12 and James 2 verse 12. Think of Paul with Felix. He preached righteousness, temperance, and judgment to come. Righteousness which is of the law, judgment which is by the law, and Felix was intemperate. His God was his belly. He had violated the first of the Ten Commandments, and Felix trembled. That's the function of the law, to make sinners tremble so they flee from wrath that's to come and embrace Christ. In Acts 28, 23, we have the Apostle Paul sharing the gospel. Listen to what scripture said. He spent most of his time persuading them concerning Jesus, both from the law of Moses and the prophets, from morning until evening. He persuaded them concerning Jesus, that's the gospel, both out of the law of Moses to bring the knowledge of sin and out of the prophets, and the prophets substantiate the truth of scripture. Once you see this principle in scripture, it will change everything. Again, as I've said before, this was the essence of a gospel proclamation of men like Spurgeon, Wesley, Whitfield, Luther, Moody, and others that God used down through the ages. They said, if you fail to use the law to bring the knowledge of sin, you'll almost certainly fill the church with false converts, and we don't want to do that anymore. Here now is a teaser of a young man I spoke to at a local college, and then will immediately pick it up when I began the conversation by asking him about his fear of death. 
I don't go to church anymore, but I do believe in God. Because your hormones are kicking in, you've got a gorgeous girlfriend, you're having sex with her regularly, and you love your pornography. Am I wrong? You're not wrong. So, yeah. you're going to think about what we talked about today? Absolutely. I mean, I've never reflected so hard till these questions started getting asked. Are you afraid of death? I mean, I'm not looking forward towards death, you know, I think there's so much in life to enjoy and experience, but I know it is natural, it's a part of life. Everything dies. Why? Hmm. That answer I don't know. We end up just disintegrating and leaving this body and our souls go to a better place from what I'm told, you know? You got a Christian background? Yeah, I grew up very Christian. I don't go to church anymore, but I do believe in God. If I offered you a fistful of diamonds worth $10 million or a glass of cool, clear water, which would you choose? It depends on the situation, I man. If I'm in the desert, I'm not gonna need that money. I'd rather take that water. That's called circumstantial priorities. Your priorities change because of your circumstances. Daniel, do you think you're a good person? I'd like to believe so, I am. Okay, I'm gonna try and change your priorities so that the most important thing in your life is your relationship with Christ. Okay, can you be honest with me? Sure, sure. How many lies have you told in your life? A lot. Ever stolen something? Accidentally. Have you ever used God's name in vain? Yeah, I think I have. Love your mum? Love my mom, of course. Ever use her name as a cuss word? Cuss word? No. no Why not? It just doesn't come to my mind when I think of a curse word. <laughs> It'd be a horrible thing to do to your mother's name instead of SH to use her name in its place. Yeah, yeah. Just... And yet you've taken the name of the God that gave you a mum, that gave you life, and used it in place of their S word to express disgust. Daniel, that's called blasphemy. So serious in the Old Testament, it's punishable by death. Now, you're familiar with the words of Jesus, whoever looks upon a woman to lust for her has committed adultery already with her in his heart. Have you ever looked at a woman with lust? Yes, I have. Sex before marriage? Yes, I have. Here's a summation. I'm not judging you. Mm. This is for you to judge yourself. Dan, you've told me you're a lying, thieving, blasphemous, fornicating adulterer at heart, and you have to face God on Judgment Day. If he judges you by the Ten Commandments, we've looked at four, you're going to be innocent or guilty? I'd be guilty. Heaven or hell? I think it would be hell. Now, does that concern you? I, if I think about it, like, yeah, of course, I feel like, yeah, I mean, I'd be guilty. I mean... What I've tried to do is put you in a desert, because at the moment, you're interested in the sparkling diamonds of sin, fornication, pornography, all those things are just sure. so attractive. But if you were to die today, you're going to be in a desert of God's wrath. Yeah. You've got hell waiting for you. Remember Jesus said, if any man thirst, let him come to me and drink. Yeah. So he's offering you the rivers of living water. He's offering you everlasting life as a free gift. Yeah. But at the moment, you're attracted to the diamonds of sin. So what I've done with those commandments is put you in the desert. Mm. Say, man, your priorities are wrong. You should seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. What did God do for guilty sinners so we wouldn't have to go to hell? He sent his son to die on the cross for our sins so that he could take bear the suffering so that we wouldn't have to go through it. Yeah, yeah, you've got a grip. It's as simple as this. You and I broke God's law, the Ten Commandments. Jesus paid the fine in full. Do you remember his last words just before he dismissed his spirit? He said three words. Have you forsaken me? No, he said three words just before he died. He said, it is finished. Oh, it is finished, yeah. We finished. broke the law, he paid the fine. He was saying, it's finished, it's done, I paid the fine. That means God can legally dismiss your case. That means he can legally let you live forever. He can take the death sentence off. You're like a judge. Yeah. He sees you've got speeding fines, says someone's paid these fines, you're out of here. And even though you're guilty, if someone pays your fines, you can walk. And even though you and I are guilty before God, God can let us walk. He can save us from death itself and eternal justice all because of what Jesus did on that cross through his death and resurrection. And Daniel, all you have to do to find everlasting life is repent and trust in the Savior. And that's a hard thing for you to do at your age because your hormones are kicking in. You've got a gorgeous girlfriend. You're having sex with her regularly and you love your pornography. Am I wrong? You're not wrong. Yeah. So those diamonds are sparkling. But just change your priorities and say, man, if I was to die today, what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? So think about this and think about the girl you're having sex with. Do you love her? I'd like to, no, I don't think I do actually. If you loved her, you'd marry her. So get right with God and say, give me a godly wife and you can have sex all you want in marriage. Your dad gave you a brand new car. He might say, stay on the right side of the road, son. Don't drink and drive and don't text and drive. He's given you some rules with the car he gave you, and God gave you some rules with the life he gave you. Yeah. Just obey those rules for your own good. So you're going to think about what we talked about today? Absolutely. I mean, I've never reflected so hard till these questions started getting asked. When are you going to repent and get right with the Lord? I could do it today. Can I pray with you? Sure, absolutely. 
Father, I pray for Daniel. Thank you for his open heart today and his honesty. I pray he'll think about the issues that are set before him, a way of life and a way of death, heaven and hell. And may you raise him up as a burning and shining light for this lost generation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Can I give you a Gospel of John? Sure. Oh, how incredible is that? The Million Dollar Gospel of John. Yeah, this is incredible, man. Such a, you know, you can convince anybody to pick this up. You know what I mean? <laughs> Great to talk to you, Daniel. Yeah, pleasure talking to you, too. I appreciate the introspect and, and all the questions. I was just saying, um, those questions you asked, you know, they're really deep. You know, I've never really reflected. We're always on go mode, but you know, I was at the verge of holding back my tears, man. Those questions are very serious, deep questions. I don't think a lot of people in this world even spare a second to think about. So just slightly reflecting on that, even to anyone who watches this, um, I hope they ask themselves these questions too, because so I believe it'll open up your eye lenses to see the world clearly and broaden your horizons on that. Make sure you check out the Living Waters podcast and this. It's everything I've ever learned in 50 years of apologetics and evangelism. Get your copy of the Evidence Study Bible and check out the starter kit while you're there at livingwaters.com. If you want your faith in God to explode, but at the same time, be wonderfully encouraged You've got to watch The Fool. You will love what God did. It will amaze you. Click here now.